Yeah, oh, there it okay. says on air. Okay, but I wasn't. What did I do wrong? Yeah, whatever. How, however, that other uh, stream got added in there. Oh, uh, okay, it was me doing something that, wrong. That messed it up. It wasn't. Okay, I mean everything was fine except you had a stream that wasn't connecting anymore. Okay, all right. So, Ooh, he had an awkward stream. Yeah, he did. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's what happens when you go visit the dork table room on Saturday. <laughs> This is All Saturday right. on this 22nd day of February. Yeah, yeah, have fun. I'll, I'll be wa- watching from the chat. That's fine. Okay. Thank you for your help, Grim. Thanks, I, ma- yeah, I made a major boo-boo, but on this 22nd of February, 2020, uh, 2020, people. The dark table! That's where we are. Dork! Dork! So, dork. we're li- running a little bit late. I, I did something that wasn't right. I messed something up. And I had one of those horrible uh, Windows updates. You know, me and my gaming, I'm addicted to my games. Can't give them up. So I go through all this torture from Windows when they want to sell me, you know, tampons or whatever. And you know what? I turned off my updates. <laughs> yeah, I should do that, but I don't I don't know. Man, I have enough trouble turning the computer on and off. And that's about as, as far as I can go without fucking something up. On, off. It's all that shit in the middle that messes me up, Mary. <laughs> anyway. Somewhere between uh, on and off and, and the rest of it yeah, messes with you. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I get it. So get welcome it. to the dork table, whoever's out there in Radio Land and reallibertymedia.com. And uh, special hey and hi and thanks to Grimner for all, this, all the sacrifice he makes for us to do this crazy shit. And I then... We can Everyone let, in the chat needs to go, ami, 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 we're not well, worthy, Lord Grimner. No, just send him <laughs> some fucking money. Well, that too. Stroking, stroking Grim's ego is, he, he's not he's not like that. Don't worry about you it. You know what? You know what would be totally freaking awesome? Yeah. Is that if we didn't have to pay to live on a planet we were born on, yeah, that would be totally would freaking be, awesome. Yeah, but we have a, a, a door table announcement at this point. Freaking moment before we even say hi to the bots and bodies. Ready? Ready. A one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Oh. Happy fucking birthday to you. Happy fucking birthday, dear people. Happy birthday to you. Wow, and Tomorrow. I thought I was bad. <laughs> Because <laughs> mine is always happy Tomorrow, birthday Beetle. to you, boop, boop, happy birthday oh, and to, to you, boop, and, boop, happy birthday, yeah. happy birthday, uh, uh. happy birthday to you, Beetle. And then <laughs> yesterday was uh, Grim and Moose's anniversary for doing the uh, the uh, Preakers Ball on, on our reallibertymedia.com. Oh, happy anniversary. That happy was yesterday. Happy an- oh, yeah, so everybody's you know, anniversary and getting older except me and you. And you know what? Yesterday was my Auntie Wanda's birthday, but she doesn't wow. celebrate him anymore because now she's in that ethereal big chair where all yeah. the cats can get on her lap because uh, that's, that's Auntie Wanda's heaven. Okay, now Beetle wants balloons and a cake. Now, I don't know how the hell you're going to get um, Gooberzilla and Hansel in the same package. That's what we should send Beetle for his birthday. You know, balloons and a cake. Mm-hmm. Spaceman Spliff and and the cake is a lie, boy. Spaceman Spliff, huh? Yeah, that's what I called Goober when he was hanging around. Ah. Because he well, always wanted spaceships. I thought it was Spaceman Spiff. Isn't that what, what Uncle yeah, Calvin and Hobbes? But I stole that and then I rewrote one word to well, not you, be a you complete added, piece. You got yeah. the L in there. Is yeah. What you did. yeah. I think it's right. I get the L out or I get the L in. One word or another, baby. All you know, L. When, when me and First were, were first together and I started this flash thing on the name, you know, as far as names, she, uh, she says, uh, well, <clears throat> spell your name without an L. You know, spell flash without an L. So I spelled F hash. <laughs> fash. 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 <laughs> I guess it read better than it does when you when you say it out loud. Anyway. Yes, 
As far as you're concerned, Beetle, yes, I did. Oh, I <laughs> fucked up. Uh, okay, Grim says, I fucked up. It was the 12th birthday of Real Liberty Media. But I've, oh. That was listening hey. to your show earlier, and I've gotten high since then. So things changed for me. <laughs> but happy so it's yeah, not, 12th it's year. not yet a teenager. No. It's still preteen because mm. 13 is a teenager. Yeah, but you can slap a teenager. Well, you could. You just can't slap, slap, slap them hard. Oh, please. Give me a break. I didn't even know how to hit people until I was a grown man. Anyway, say hi anyway. to the bots and the bodies that are loitering in the uh, bots chat. Bots and room. bodies. There's lots of bots and bodies. There's a barman right up top. He's the bestest bot in the whole wide world. And then there's Beetle, the young man who is going to have an anniversary of the day he graced this planet with his presence tomorrow. And we... Dun, 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 dun. We must have fanfare. I also... <laughs> Okay, we also got <laughs> Grimner and Grimner Moosey. Moose Girl. Grimner and Moosey, da, 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 who had an anniversary yesterday or birthday or however you want to look. I prefer anniversary. Yeah. Because yeah, it is an anniversary yeah, of yeah. the day that you grace the world with your presence on of the radio the stream. Of the Real Liberty Media. That's when they kicked it off, you know, officially well, 12 years ago yesterday. Yes, they okay. grace the world. I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here, as well as Anti. Anti. Hey, we got some Kate Asmodeus Asmo. Asmo. And a Chalcedoni with the oh, O going oh, on. Oh, all fancy dressed up. Oh. Coming to the dark table all with your O and everything. How'd you know I was dressed up? No, the <laughs> Chalcedoni's all dressed up. Come over to oh, the dark wow, table. Good. Bright, it's bright. I don't know. Their own I O. Know. He's got the O. Chasing the O or bringing the O. The O has got to go. No, because speaking of O, we got cycles here. Cycles. Hello, honey. She's in the kitchen. And we got the lovely Miss Donna Van Meter. Hey, damn Van Meter. Damn Van Meter. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of damn Van Meter, Vinny made it home. He's still... Not joining us back on the internet yet steadily, but he's still recouping. I would assume that was a two weeks. I mean, that's a pretty big operation to have at our age. He's only a few years younger than me, five. Yeah. So at this age in life, it's a slow re recovery process. Oh yeah. And he's been oh, pushing yeah. himself, walking, and you know, trying to be active so it won't you know backfire on him, so to speak. Because people after the surgery, they're very lazy and, and you know, everything hurts. You can't do much. And, well, Major Vinny is he's a little different. <laughs> well, yes, Major Vinny is the, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, but a happy Roger recovery Roger. to my good buddy Vincent. Yes, he is recovering. Hello, me. I don't know, I didn't know he was covered and now he's mm. really covering, but you know, that's okay. It's okay. Get well, uh, Vinny. Yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, we no, also no. got a free enslaved here. Oh, God. As well as a frumpy high Oh, uh, we got a frumpy oh, under. He's up there in Kanukistan. Kanukistan. I'm here. Oh. Hey, Gramps. Yeah. We got Java, 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 Java Dr. Dr. in the house, Dr. as well as Ooh. Meister Brower. Woody. Yeah. And yeah, Woodman. Uh, Woodman. We got some Prince in the house too, uh, as well as Prince. Rob Woods. And Rob, Rob Woods. I hope, hey, Rob I hope Woods. that issue Prince. you discussed earlier today gets better because yeah, you know, I thought I, he was kidding. When, when I, I saw that yeah. you had yeah. had some dental work done as well, I know I've had a couple of times where the dentist has said. Now, if your face starts to go numb, let me know because then I've hit the wrong nerve and that could be a permanent oh, kind of thing, and man, that's not cool. Wow. Yeah, so I hope that's not the case with you, hon. Yeah, because I, I thought I he was joking around with us. I didn't really take him seriously. I, I feel bad about it now. <laughs> I thought he was joking because we're on the well, RLM. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, you never know in the chats because chat rooms are crazy places. Uh, Rob is such a curmudgeon, and he never bitches about nothing except government. I know. He never complains about anything except the government, the weather. Pretty much it. Yeah. Sums up his yeah. 
<sighs> but I did I did look up in my oils book because I got the new edition. I got the eleventh edition. My previous book was the fifth edition, so it's like I was a little bit behind the times. And I looked up for you know like uh, numbness and nerve damage and that kind of stuff. And peppermint is supposed to be really good for helping to alleviate any kind of um, uh, inflammation issues that might be adding in, to in your face. Yeah. Well, you know, if you if you know the general area yeah. where you know, like if he had dental work, then right there on that uh, particular part of skin, because peppermint's another one. You keep that shit away from your eyes, your mouth. You know, yeah. any place you got yeah. cut fluids, you want to avoid that. But on the flesh, because I use it on my headache. No, I have oh, twice. Yeah. I've had to use it twice. I had another headache coming on about two weeks ago. And bam, right to that oil, and one drop, and boom. And the next thing I know, I forgot I even had a headache. So, whether yeah. it's me and my mind working overtime or the peppermint oil, I don't care. It worked for me. Thank you, Mary. It it has been known to help with the inflammation issue, but if it's if it's something like that, then right there where the jaw muscle hinges or the jaw hinges, that's where you need to put a couple of drops of peppermint oil. And see if that doesn't help with any kind of inflammation or something on Just, that. Chances are it won't make it worse. These natural things that we yeah. use. Yeah, it won't make yeah. it worse. They seem, for sure. But they do seem to work. So whether it's yeah. me thinking they work, making it work, or whether it's working, who cares? You know, and it's just to put this out there, it's not new agey because this has been around for like freaking eons. That people have been using plants as medicine, Very or history. as I—I I don't remember if it was uh, Plato or it was some Greek person that's, you know, given the credit for saying it. Let uh, let food be your medicine, and medicine be your food. So yes, true. But there there are quite a few of those essential oils out there and things like that that you really shouldn't eat, but it's you can use them topically. So right, right, right. Just, just got to be careful. Backing you up with my own personal, I've tried that to see what would happen, and it worked. Now, to claim it was the thing that worked or not, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I just believe it. Because when I believe yeah. something and I think it's going to make me feel better, well, it, that's what it does. And when I believe something's going to make me feel like shit, that's what it does. Yeah. Yeah, because you create your own reality. Okay, where were we? I interrupted yeah. you. We I were, we were Rob at Rob Works. Works. Now we're at Rome. Rooms. Rooms. Grimmy's an expert. Do you know what an expert is? It's a former drip under pressure. It's a Moving present along. drip under pressure, Miss Murray. Please. <laughs> and speaking of drips on the dork table, <laughs> I will grant you an extra five points. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, let's see. Hi, Rome's. Rome's. White, the letter yeah. turner of the RLM <laughs> channel, mostly followed by Weather Dork, who Ooh. has the hots for Vanna White. He keeps trying to, you know, bring in some wind to look up her skirt. Ooh, yeah, yeah you know, Weather skirt. Skirt. Yeah. We also got the Phantom. The Phantom. The Phantom. It's the Phantom. We got a CC66 in the chat as C-C-66. well as a Chaskura and a Cyborgian Noodle. And you guys, you are so lucky that you don't have video because I'm sitting here doing the Cyborgian Noodle dance. Are you wearing uh, your Eeyore suit though, while you do that? That would that would make it beyond priceless. Whatever price. Oh, the is. Eeyore suit would yeah, be like just, that. That's, that would. That's your deal closer, that Eeyore suit. You can't say no to a woman that's wearing an Eeyore suit. <laughs> How could you? What are you going to tell your friends? What would you say to well, the girl in the Eeyore suit? She's crying. I told her no. Well, what did she want? Yeah, well, Nothing. <laughs> Never mind. But see, it can't help but put a smile on your face because you just look, especially seeing a grown-up. Well, okay. No, it's Chronologically, that do with no, it's, it's the it's the suit and the, the person <laughs> in the suit. You know, picture Hansel in an Eeyore suit and tell me that it's terrible <laughs> now. Okay. You know, I actually have a picture of John Wayne <laughs> in a great big bunny rabbit <laughs> on laughing. It's oh. hilarious, and <laughs> I you can't help laughing. but laugh. Yeah, you just can't. He had a sense of humor, and he was a gigantic fucking man. What was yes, he, he like? Was. Six four, six five. 
two eighty. Something like that, yeah. He was he was tall. And he had to walk all crooked just so that he could get through doorways. Never mind, that was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> I see Doug, Doug is in the chat. Uh, as well as E Man and End Civ. Let's Sib end the civility. Yeah. Oh wait, they already did that. Okay. Let's start a civilization where Ooh. people are actually civil to each yeah. other. Guess huh? who just what you snuck in? Cowboy Chat. Hey, Cowboy Tech just joined. Hi, Cowboy Tech. Yeah. Um, I also see Swampy Woik is here. So you see, he's two timing. He's two. We got a double dip going on some multiplicity stuff here. I also see Gromit is in the chat as well as JJ's nine nine JJ from Scotland. Uh, yeah, from Scotland. Yeah, where all yeah. the Scots land. I know all yeah. that. Yeah, it's like the tenth planet, right? Yeah, yeah. We also got a kiss in the chat. Kiss in the chat. A kiss. Somebody's kissing in the chat. And we got some popple popple pot sauce. And Quasimodo. Don't you know? Don't mind the hunch. Oh, he's just smuggling something out of Walmart. No big deal. Yeah. We also got a sock puppet. My sock. And SLC Mike just joined too. Hi, Mike. And to round out the crew, the one, the only. Oh no, that's not the round. I had to scroll down. Scroll, uh, scroll, rolling. Donna says. Sir Roland. Yeah, Donna Smart says. Ass. Good I day, also Dork. See and Roger. Dork is ever. It's the Dork holiest year. Roger. Ever. Yeah, the holiest and Roger. I know. I know, and Z picks. And Z picks. Z picks. And Smart ass. It's all now City that's Mike. rounding out the crew. Is that what that's doing? Yeah, well, I rolled my head around when I was running out the crew, and now I'm dizzy. But how many of these people are on the FBI's most wanted list? See? (laughs) Seriously, do you think the FBI wants us? Seriously? (laughs) No. (laughs) Uh, We're the people the FBI laughs at when they go kill the bad guys. Well, good. Good. I hope I give them a chuckle. And if any of them are peeking in whatever TV or... Or a computer monitor or whatever, because I have my my camera thingies to where they can't peek in. But you know, if anybody's peeking in on any of that, you're welcome. Oh, <laughs> you're. I yeah. hope I have traumatized you for life. Oh, so you are wearing the you're wearing the underwear to the ERC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't give her any ideas. <laughs> So, did you ever see that that meme on the internet where the woman's got uh, there? It's a like a sixty odd year old couple, and the woman's topless and she's got dogs painted on her boobs because they're hanging down to her stomach. <laughs> oh yes, I have. <laughs> uh, see, and I've they also say, seen the people of Walmart picture where the girl or the woman, the yeah older lady is yeah. topless and she's got a pair of really oversized men's pajama pants and pulled them up over her boobs <laughs> which really isn't pulling them up too high because they're oh do your boobs hang low do they uh-huh. wobble to and fro can you tie them in a knot can you tie them in a oh, I'm moving uh-huh. along can, <laughs> but can you actually sue somebody for burning your corneas <laughs> that's the question and you know a good Jew lawyer probably convince the jury that yes this woman burnt his, my client's corneas look at the state of this poor bastard he can barely fucking see <laughs> before he saw this woman he was a strong man now look at him all broken down and fucked up your honor <laughs> every time every time he opens his eyes he goes eek cuz he's afraid he might see it again so <clears throat> Yeah, and I just planted mental images. Can I be sued for that? No. Did I do no, that? No, that wouldn't hold up in admiralty court. Oh, okay. But Phew. see, we're we're gonna go on this cornea burning thing and wonder for the next year or two. I might start a panic. You thought coronavirus was frightening. Wait till the admiralty court gets a hold of you. I keep telling people coronavirus is just the three two flu. Quit drinking so damn much corona. No, it's not the corona, Mary. Be serious. It's everything okay, else. Be, ser- be serious? Yeah. Well, coronavirus is yeah. the same virus that As. from SARS and from MRSA and from 
from. There's umpteen zillion. It's one of the most prevalent viruses out there. Meaning, in layman slow guy terms. It's also the same virus that gives you the cold. All right, so it's as dangerous as cutting your finger in the kitchen. You get a Band-Aid, you put a Band-Aid on. You don't call 911. I'm dying. I cut my finger in the cooking. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right? You know, or no? and the other thing that people don't oh. stop and realize is okay, this supposedly started in the Wuhan district and they'd already had some kind of um training going on just a couple of months prior to this about a supposed viral pandemic nonsense in that area. They also happen to have a laboratory in that area, they also happen to be an area that has had the worst um, air pollution for quite some time. They're right up there. You know, they keep, they take this, wow, how stupid can you be? They take that as a challenge as opposed to a, no, don't go there kind of thing. Well, how polluted can you be? That's not a challenge, okay? But this is Wuhan District where they have uh, pollution. They have, they've had a, a, a a practice drill. They've they've got a laboratory that deals with viral stuff to worry about those people that just might do, you know, biological weapons kind of shit. All of these lovely little things are going on in this one little area. And then when you start seeing how many people are dying and who the people are that are dying there, people that have a compromised immune system, most of them are men age 50 and older. So is this really, you know, something that – or do we have to take in some of the environmental issues as well, some of the surrounding information as well. Hmm. It's plus well, Cirque when you look at it, it's not as contagious as the measles is. Okay, but Cirk mentioned that the uh, the expected percentage of deaths from flu season of the people that will get the flu is one percent. The amount yeah. of people that are expected to pass away from this new virus of all the people that get it is two percent. Yeah. So it's the, but they're trying to make it sound like it's something different, Mary. It's a numbers game. It's just like when they say that you're twice as likely to die of lung disease if you smoke cigarettes as, as compared to if you don't smoke. Well, the way they came up with that number is they took a hundred people that don't smoke and they took a hundred people that do smoke. And the 100 people that don't smoke, one of them died from lung disease. The 100 people that do smoke, two of them died from lung disease. So, therefore, those that smoke are twice as likely. It's the same way that they work the numbers. Mm. It's a numbers game. Mm. It's how you collect your data, how you compile it, and, and you know, how you present it. So, and how you I'm, take I'm not the, afraid. How you take what you're told is part of it, too. Because there's the yes. indoctrinated masses out there that they truly believe if the government tells you, then it's true. The government wouldn't lie to you. What are you, no, stupid? The government doesn't lie to us. No, it's stupid. The truth is the government does not not ever lie to you. Everything's a lie to the government. Everything. Every fucking word of it. Right down to who owns who, babe. Because you know what? You know, technically, the government mm. doesn't lie to anyone because the government is an inanimate yeah, I, uh, creation. I was going it's with people those. that are working under the color of or in the <laughs> name of. <laughs> those are the lying some bitches. Okay, but see, the, the audience that we have at the door table on, on the podcast itself, okay? We already have all the people that are aware of what we talk about. New new people are not going to be here. We're not attracting people that don't know the things that we know. Now, there's a few people that disagree with what we believe or claim to know what we believe mm -hmm. we know. But their opposition is the state. So, no, you're living in a fiction in my reality. And in your reality, I'm living in a fiction. And that is the freaking game the state is playing with you. 
And you but you either... know what? I happen to enjoy reading fiction. So, you know, you go ahead and you do your fiction and I'll sit back. Okay, and now you're it. now you're knocking down what I'm trying to make a point of. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Because actually there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they hmm. they don't like fiction. They want facts. They want this. And but they just they, cannot grasp the concept. They take this state activity and crap we do, whatever, and they take it as a real thing because they want to play in it. If you yes. don't want to play in it, then you're called names by all the people that want to force you to play in it. Yeah. But the people that don't play in it don't give a fuck about what you do. Just leave us alone, whoever us may be. But that's yeah. not the way it really works. We have this uh, entitled freaking enforcement society that thinks that they have a right to force their shit on you because they read a book and they know stuff. Yeah. Like everything that you're saying about the coronavirus, I agree with you. Okay? There's a handful okay. of people on the Real Liberty Media, I hear them, they agree with you. But they're not, the, the people that are out there in mass, don't, they don't hear the side of the argument. That's the problem. Dan, I'm starting to see more and more people that are calling bullshit on it. Okay, well, and maybe that's it, nice. maybe I'm seeing it because that's what you're I you're looking for to it. See. Yeah, you're looking for it. You could give up and not see it. That's up to you, I think. But it's still numbers. You don't. We don't need huge astronomical fucking numbers. But the amount of people we need, we don't have to make any kind of real change in the system. You need five percent of the people that use that system. To make a change in it. And the other 95% yes. will go where the 5% tell them to go. So, yeah, sadly, followers. the 5% that are leading are the fucking thieves that are fronting for these banks and these medical practices and all these horrible Israel laws. <laughs> oh, hate, hate Islam and all this trash, bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Look what they yeah. did to us in 9 11. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, I know. Oh, good Lord. I mean, Chloe and me didn't get along because she disagrees with my side of what I think happened on 9-11. She was upset I wouldn't go with the official story. <laughs> because, well, you can melt steel. That's how they fold, they forge it. <laughs> yeah, but see, jet fuel doesn't burn hot enough to to melt steel. Well, it, it eroded it. <laughs> Not from the top down. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> they they have fuel does yeah, not wait, wait, vaporize wait, wait. steel. But have you ever seen when I was there? I saw the fucking buildings with my own eyes. I delivered to that building. It is so huge. If you knock ten floors off the top, the weight isn't going to bring the whole building down. It's just not possible. They're dreaming. That weight's being held up already. Still supports. <laughs> it's it's what what happened is they blew it up from the bottom down. Oh yeah. Underneath. Oh yeah. Brought it straight down. Well, how many people don't know? And a know? lot of the eyewitness testimony that said that they heard the explosions mm -hmm. from the basement levels mm -hmm. and from lower levels um, are all dead now. Are they? Wow, I didn't know. Imagine that. that. Well, yeah, it's been twenty years. Well, <sighs> no, they died within like five, six years because they got this mysterious disease that just killed them all off. Yeah, kind of crazy. You know these people oh, yeah. dying George of mysterious Bush's, diseases. Yeah, George Bush's revenge. Mm hmm It's kind of like Montezuma's revenge, only it's louder. Only much, much worse. <laughs> and they're so yeah. busy talking about Hillary. Like, like Trump hasn't killed anybody in the time he's been sitting in that fucking chair. Yeah. Hmm? I, mm, he was bragging I about killing that freaking uh, Iranian. I know. He died like a dog in the tunnels. Yeah, blah, I mean, blah, blah. Well, blah. okay. Well, it, okay. This is the voice of a world leader. And as one of the people owned by that corporation, I say I give Trump the big, <laughs> gee, take it out the fucking box, buddy. It hurts. Yeah. Well, then, yeah. you know, my my peers that I live among, uh, they don't hold a very good opinion of 
the country I'm from. But they're not taking it out on me personally yet, so I'm cool. Well, you know, and that's that's the sad thing is people have a tendency to to stereotype. You know, it's just like, oh, my God, there's a group of young black men over there. I should be afraid. What if they're getting ready to start singing on the corner? <laughs> it happens, but you don't see that shit in the news. You see the pack of wild dogs as the news reports it. And it's like, oh, come on, people. Come on. I mean, I have I have seen groups of people behave in manner like that, and it is most definitely like a um, – it's one of those things where you go, wow. You know, one starts it – and, and I'd, I'd seen a video not too long ago. It's not the first person that's the one that gets a movement going. It's the first follower that gets the movement going. Because the first person, you know, I could go out there and dance like a lunatic, yeah. and everybody will just laugh at me. Yeah. But if someone joins in and starts dancing with me, yeah. then more people will come along. So it's not necessarily me out there dancing like a lunatic that starts something. It's that first person that steps up and says, hey, I'm going to dance with you. I don't hear any music coming from you, but I hear some music in my head. I'm going to dance right along with you. Then other people join in. So that's – where was I going with that? <laughs> well, I think what where you're going with, nobody wants to be the first one to make the move is what it boils down to. Basically. And you know what? I mm, That's what I heard you say. Okay. I mean, in my yeah. language, to repeat what you say the way I understood it, not – that which is what I think we do, really, not repeat each other like like a textbook or a politician or whatever religion. When when you repeat things like the, the of the quality that we pay attention to, when you repeat it back, it's in your own language, in your own vibration. Yes. So you're only hitting a few people out there in the world that are capable of receiving you without cringing. Well, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you real quick on this one. I've met celebrities in person in life, in passing, doing other things. And, hey, oh, you're the famous so-and-so. And, you know, they're, they're not all that you see on the big screen. That is, uh, that's paint and fucking makeup and good photography. <laughs> you know, those are some talented people presenting an image to uh somebody that's not real that's why they called movies not documentaries <laughs> yeah took me forever to realize that bilbo at baggins wasn't real i saw him on tv I went, wait a minute oops <laughs> oops well come on i mean we're supposed to be adults right and, well it's supposed and, to be and right and we sit around when we when we associate with each other and we bicker and argue about our opinions about an illusion. Yeah. Com well, that's because we've grown very attached to our opinions. Right, and completely don't listen to the other guy's side. Well, no, that's that's no fun. But that's what we do. And I say we, I, I must do it as well. Well... But it's hard. Okay, see, it sounds easy to do. Oh, I'm paying attention. No, you're not. You know, because we're already where we're going in life, in our own little minds, I think. So it takes quite an impact to get somebody to listen and understand what you're trying to tell them. Because we're a lot of superficial cunts in this world right now. All people care about is... My cell phone, my nuts, my wallet. I'm good, baby. Watch me go. Yeah. Well, there's more to life. Yeah. A lot more to life. But the, the things that are important in life have been played down and, and made ridiculous. And the things that are ridiculous that should be played down are popular. Isn't it crazy? It is kind of sort of a bass backwards world. Well... That's well, is it backwards or is this the result of all the bullshit that's gone into the machine? 
You know, if they fed this machine with honesty instead of deceit, how could we get results like we get? Being poisoned, all the fucking shit, second rate. You know, they vote for laws to take guns away from people, and then they shoot the guy that they're going to go take the gun away from. What? America? Are you on drugs? I think they are. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy? I mean, people will vote for those kind of things and say, yeah, we need a law. There ought to be a law until that law also applies to them, and they go, hey, wait a minute. Because it's just a knee-jerk reaction because it, they have been trained and ingrained and programmed. And, and sadly, it is part of this, this physical reality is the training and ingraining and programming and all of that other fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it's worked. Have you noticed how many fucking movies there are? about these virus things, Vi virus oh, yeah. tragedies. I mean, it goes back years. I mean, oh, yeah, it goes wow. back. God, what was, what was that movie where they had a meteorite and they got, was that called virus? I don't know. I don't How do remember. I know? They were down in a contained area and uh -huh. a virus, um, they got mm -hmm. a virus off of this meteorite and people started dropping dead and, Contagion, maybe? I don't maybe know. Maybe that's what it was called. But that was from like the 60s. But the point I was so getting at, Mary, us. is, yeah, well, you got young kids right now that ain't going to watch movies from the fucking 60s. Okay? They're just growing up. They're teenagers now. So old to them is 2005. True. <laughs> right? So when they were born, oh, look at the shit they were making when I was born. And it's all negative, murdering, killing Stealing every freaking horrid fucking thing you can imagine. There's a film designed or, to desensitize. Right? Okay, and that's that's what I was going for. Because the the stuff in life that's good for us is dull and boring. Yeah. I mean, if you're a guy, maybe the the fags and the women like all that romance stuff, but to me, it's like a waste of time to watch it. Watch somebody else do it. Hey, fuck you! I want to do that. <laughs> Well, yeah, I get that. I, that's why I, yeah, I don't understand this whole porn thing. Same with myself. sports. Yeah, but it's the same with sports. Why do you want to sit in a fucking stadium and watch 22 guys slap each other on the ass when they throw a ball? Uh, and you know what? I found out about one of the football players from hmm, the Patriots. Oh. Uh, what was his name? Uh, he's a Mexican named guy. But he had a Aaron something. Aaron. So, ah, anyway, the point of the whole it's a our TV show on uh, what Netflix, and they made a freak. The guy played a whole fucking season of football after he committed two murders. <clears throat> or it wasn't my. Oh been yeah, three. he wasn't. He wasn't with the Patriots. Yeah, he? he was a receiver for the Patriots. Played the whole season oh. for the Pats. And then at the end, then at the end, for some reason. they find out that he was gay and he was a murderer. <laughs> huh. Grimmie wow. said that movie was the Andromeda Strain. Mm -hmm. There you go. The Andromeda Strain. And, well, you know, I have, I have, you know, because I have Roku. <laughs> I don't so I watch Does older I... movies and stuff. Oh, yeah. And um, I've watched a few movies that, you know, back in the day when they first uh, came out, it was yeah. like, oh man, I just laughed my ass off at that. And then I've watched them again, you know, like 20, 30 years later and look at it and go, I actually laughed at that. That is so stupid. That is so, but you know, now when I watch that stuff, it's like, I, I have a tendency to nitpick and look for the, for the, um, things that should have been cut out, you know, like, oh, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. boom Editing, mic yeah. hanging yeah. down yeah. or, the or B the movies, total, yeah. Yeah, or the total of, fallacy of whatever they're putting out there. Yeah. It's like, seriously? Or they're they're on one of those floating things in water on top of water, but their their swimming trunks are dry. Yeah. And how the hell and your hair's dry. How the fuck did you get how long have you been on that thing? I know. That's <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I do shit when like I watch that. that stuff now. I nitpick the shit out of uh, it. And I find it amusing. What? So, hey, you, I'm weird. Do you remember reading books, hard books? 
Oh, I still do. I've okay. got three of them going right now. I, I read a book once called To Kill a Mockingbird. And you know what I read on the internet webs just a couple months back? That, What's that? That book is going to be banned from the uh, libraries of America because it's got bad words in it. And oh, what, good God. Yeah, well, they want to yeah. get rid of Huckleberry Finn, too, yeah. and Tom Sawyer. Wow. So, but the story is... Yeah. They, they even made a movie out of it, and the movie wasn't bad. It was pretty well done. You know, a bunch of little kids growing up in poor times of America. <sighs> you know, the white girl tries to have the black guy do her. And her daddy catches her. He beats the shit out of her and blames the black guy. Yeah. He tried to rape my baby. That, that, that. Nah, she was the one doing it all. Yeah. But see, it's, mm. the, see, the negative of that film was, <laughs> it was, it's so obvious to me now compared to the way I saw it when I, you know, when I first saw it. And now I see the setup of the movie to get you to sympathize with certain things, certain ideas that if nobody told you these things, you'd never think of them. And I can tell you what those things are right off the top of my head. Politics, well, you know, education, and religion never come to you in a million years if you weren't in, if you weren't told about them. Yeah, if you weren't programmed with it from damn near birth. See, and that's that's just like with racism. Hmm. Babies are not racist. They don't care what color your skin is. If you're going to sit there and giggle with them or, or hold their hand or play or what have you, hmm. babies don't care what color you mm -hmm. are. Or dogs. Or cats. No, dogs don't either. So long as you let them come up and sniff your butt so that they can say hi. That's how dogs say hi. That's what I mean, sniff Mary. Your butt. We must be taught to dislike each other or it would never – see, it would never be a natural thing to do. It's it's taught to you how to do it. Yeah. Because I had a little brother and me and him, we grew up, you know, uh, with each our own. He didn't – my dad didn't pit us against each other with – stuff to make the other kid jealous you know if he got one i got one and so on or we would get things that were for both of us together but yeah. not well he gets one but you're young so no no nothing for you little boy so but i've seen other people have these problems see and and i grew up with lots of brothers and my dad would take the boys fishing or whatever and he would say, you can't go because you're not old enough. But my mm -hmm. little brother, who yeah. was two years younger than me, got to go. So I wow. I realized at an early age, it's not because I'm too young to go. It's mm. because I'm a dumb old girl. Does that make you a feminist now? Or are you, are you over your anger issue? I'm, you know, I don't think I was ever really angry over it. I yeah. was just confused and wondering mm -hmm. why he had to lie to me like that. Why couldn't he just tell me, well, you know, this oh, is for the boys. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't, I don't know. I, I had a pretty honest. That was pretty honest about my folks. You know, this is for you. This is not for you. Not, not lie to me about something. Just be up front. No, you can't go. Okay. Not, exp you know. There was no need to explain. I wasn't stupid. Yeah, not a bullshit explanation. Mm. But Well, plus, I ran the projector at school when I was like 10 years old. And right about that period of time, they had older girls, like 10, 11, 12 at the school. And they had this big meeting with all the girls, but all the boys weren't allowed to go. And I was the projection guy, but they didn't want me to project it that day. So looking back on hindsight, oh, now I get it. But at the time, it didn't even phase me i mean i have to think about shit like this to even remember it because it's so obscure you know the gender split and oh you know all this equality crap i never thought myself better than anybody else except if i was you know competing with them and then their gender had nothing to do with it yeah you know and that was one of the, i remember those days where all the girls got gathered into a room and none of the boys, and we weren't allowed to tell the boys anything about it. Mm -hmm. And they even put black, you know, mm -hmm. shades mm -hmm. up on the windows. So yeah. The boys couldn't peek in either. Yeah. 
See, and, th- and this is this is the world that we came out of, where things were transitioned into. You know, you, you worked with smaller groups, your own gender, shit. That was we we called it normal in my day when I was growing up, because there was hippies and weirdos and drug addicts and bikers and niggers and spicks and pansies and you go on and on and on. Everybody had a fucking title. Yeah, and you guys. Yeah, think, and my dad used that kind of terminology. My mom never did, but my dad did. Same shit, but we think it's like uh, okay. I got the idea from Clint Richardson defining his version of what the word God means. Okay. Yeah, he goes into really in depth. I've tried to tell people on the RealLibertyMedia dot com uh, that listen to the radio podcast, check him out. At you see why. And what what he did was, to me, I listened to his side of this, his explanations. And he his version of God is, God is the universe, people, and everything in it. So when you start titling things, that's when they lose, that's it. That, then they're not good anymore. We're supposed to all be equal and share a planet. Not this ruling class and politicians and religious leaders and... This education building's better than this education building. It's the same fucking education. What are you guys learning? Two different fucking things? Please. Then what's the point of education if they're teaching you one thing at this building, but something different at that building? Then why are you going at all? Yeah. And they call me nuts for asking a question of that kind. Because, hey, conform. Shut up. Sit down. We'll tell you. Blah. And over a lifetime of that, I went, okay. And then I just never did it. Unless it would, and if I could see the benefit for myself, then I wouldn't do it. Like the passport thing. That, ooh, man. As much bitching and sniveling as I do, I realized young that my most important and most valuable asset that I would ever have, a possession in life, is my signature. And I've yet to find a way to really give it a definition, but I, I, can, I know by the things that I've physically done over my life that the things that I didn't sign were the traps, and the things that I did sign were traps that are more maneuverable with your straw man. Ah. Like, I've been married. The circus is my third wife. My second wife is passed, and my first wife and me, we grew up together and blah, blah, blah. So we're, it was weird. But uh, now that I'm you know, at this point in life and I can see the world the way I see it, it's not so bad. You know, I see a lot of people make jokes every day. Oh, we're fucked, Beatles said. Like to say, oh, we're all fucked. And I don't, I don't think so. I think we're all fucked if you want to be all. And if you don't want to be, there's an answer. Yeah. Well, but, there's there's a there's an answer for everything. Exactly. Yeah, but it's not the same one for each of us. It's, it's not a one no, size. No, it isn't. There you go. Because we're each having our own experience. Uh, how do you explain that to somebody that is so engulfed in the protection of mother state and medical and, oh, they're going to save my life if I get hit by a bus and all this fucking nonsense? You know, I heard a very good explanation for that. Uh-huh. And I don't even remember what video it was from because I was cleaning house <laughs> while listening. Yeah. But it was, how did he put that? Um, if there was only one path there wouldn't need to be more than one person. Oh, well, that's interesting, too, because, yeah, it takes two to tango. Yeah. Well, I don't and even tango. I heard that, but... and it was like, bang, I had this great big light bulb go off in my there head. Wow. Yeah. And so, you're still here. Well, I'm still here, yeah, but it it just made such total sense to me. It's like, oh, okay, so all these people would say, no, you must believe this way. No, it must be. There is only one path. There is only one. If there was only one, there would only need to be one person. Mm-hmm. Period. Okay. I I would agree with that hearing it from this perspective. 
So, mine, you know, you know my perspective. They say there's seven billion some odd people on the planet, so there's seven billion some odd paths. Hmm. There's probably seven billion some odd versions or perspectives of hmm. the truth as maybe, well. Maybe more because I've changed my path so many times. <laughs> Or I think oh, I have. Still your, well, it's still your path. It's just you've taken the scenic route. Hmm. Do you have a Hawaiian shirt? Are you a tourist? No. No, no, I don't have a Hawaiian shirt. <clears throat> well, I, I didn't know if maybe you had like a Tom Selleck shirt or something like that, you know, and you're, no, you're doing no. the touristy thing and taking no. multiple paths just because, <laughs> hey, that looks good. No, I didn't <laughs> like that one. It itches. You know, that kind of shit. No. But you never I know. always could. But any, what I was saying about Clint is he's broken down these ideas <clears throat> of that I have had for many years, but never find a, a comfortable answer to it. You know, because everybody's got their explanation, but it doesn't mean it's something you want to agree with. You just want to hear it. It's one thing. But to agree with it? Nah. Th but this guy's pretty close to anything I've ever heard. And what I was getting at, the titles that we use, like nigger, spick, pansy, it's still, in its sense, it's still a title. You're not being equal with the other guy. You're looking down at him or her, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a label you're slapping on someone else. Yeah, and I've been a uh, mixed breed my whole fucking life. So, God, I've heard every insult. Both. The funniest part is I've had people bash both the Jews and the Mexicans while I'm there, not really, really knowing that I'm both. And then, you know, when they find out, I go, oh, I'm so sorry. And I've been laughing the whole fucking time because the jokes were hysterical. Because I'm not in love with my uh, my heritage, whatever the fuck you call it. Heredity. My gender thing. I I want to be the guy in this thing. But, you know, outside of that, not much matters. See, and I just, I got to the point where, because everybody go, well, what are you? Well, I got German, I got Indian, I got French, I got, you know, and I started listening, and I just finally look at him and say, I'm a Heinz 57. I'm saucy. Right, but then <laughs> when when you deal with the reality of all that nonsense, you come down with, these corporations own my paperwork. Because just because you name a, a country that somebody was born in doesn't necessarily mean that you've identified the you know the bloodline they carry from wherever their family originated. See, it's all a bunch of shit. We're we're being fucked somehow in ways that I have yet to find a, a really good way to explain. I just know they're right in front of me, and if I look hard enough, I'll see it. Doesn't mean I can explain what I see to you in a way you're going to understand it. it. Just means, hey, I see this. Yeah. And, and as far as agreeing, there's a handful of us, too. Cowboy Tech, Grimner, Moose Girl, Java Doctor. It goes, there's a list of them, right? And these people, mm -hmm. we don't all say every fucking thing the same exact goddamn way where we sound like we're having a uh, conversation. But the core yeah. of the whole fucking thing is, yep, government is a piece of shit. And we're stuck in it somehow. And there ain't no damn opt-out. And we're all angry about it. I mean, I'm not the only one that pisses and moans about it. But the difference for me is I'm a guest in somebody else's country. So I can tolerate that. But if I was home, I'd be raised in fucking hell. I'd probably be in tr trouble or jail. Like Vinny, only different. Subversive. Not directly in doing physical damage. Find some other way. Yeah. Like enlightening people nose to nose about what the fuck is going on in life because they don't know, and I can't tell people here in Denmark. <clears throat> They'd think I was just as say and crazy here as they wouldn't at home. Here it would just be Danish people laughing at me. See, and I'm just to the point where this is this is what I see going on. Mm. You may agree with it, you may not, but this is how I see it. And then, you know, that's it. I just, unless they want to converse more on it, I just kind of mm. let it go at that. Because it's, I've gotten to the point where I just freaking don't have the energy to argue anymore mm. with people. You know, it's like, okay, this is how I see it. You don't see it that way? Okay. That's your vision. My vision is right here. 
I like mine right now. Yeah, but or we, I may not like it, but this is the one that I've has become a habit of me seeing. Okay, but we get consumed by the anger when it happens. Some of us. Yeah. Where it takes you over and you follow it instead of you controlling it. Because you can control your good side and do nice things for other people and nothing goes bad. But when you're angry, try controlling that. Uh, it's not the same fucking road. It's different. Because you justify shit. Oh, you said this, and oh, you did that, so I should do this, and I should do that. And why? Because of our indoctrination into this fucked up world that we live in. And when you tell people that we live in a shitty, fucked up world, they're thinking in terms of the broader scope. Like, oh, they might go, oh yeah, war. Blah, blah, blah. Well, no, no, it's not that simple. It's way more complicated than that. Everything that we do is bad for us. And all the things that are good for us that will help us are against the law to do or banned by the state. Yeah, what? well, the state's so good at banning things, and yet the state is another one of those inanimate, fictitious things. So, <laughs> bless really? you. I will. Yeah. But, see, <laughs> that's the minority. Yeah. Not the, the majority is there. Bless you. We've been, we're being out, outclassed, you know, by a superior thinking mind. And well, see, that's the illusion that these educated idiots get. That, well, they got, you know, they read a certain book and they got, they got dicked by a certain, you know, professor on a certain day that was a commemorative spiritual day in the education world. And then they went to the ceremony and they get their little special paper that says how special they are. Doesn't mean a fucking thing to me. See? But it means something to them. And then if you don't yeah. bow to the other person just telling you, hey, I'm a doctor of this and that and the other or whatever, where's your proof? <laughs> I've got a diploma in my office. Yeah, but where's your proof? <laughs> Well, you know, it doesn't make a darn bit of difference how much proof you give me that proof. Here, hold this while I whip out my proof kind of thing. It doesn't make a difference how much proof you've got. If someone is not going, is not open to actually looking at whatever proof you have yeah. and taking it in in an adult manner and then comparing it to what they already know or being willing to let go of what they already think or know. Hmm. Proof, proof is just you know it's it's like the wind. Hmm. Some people it doesn't make a darn bit of difference how much proof you've got. They're hmm. still going to say yeah, but <laughs> well, that dreaded yeah, but yeah. Well, I got a line for that. Proof is the story I like best. That's what proof yep. is. That's all it is. It doesn't have to be true. It has to please the listener. Yeah. Wow. Remember how much sympathy old little Greta was getting? <laughs> oh, I know. Quit picking on her. She's just a child. And the whole time they were picking on that kid from Covington that all he did was stand there and smile yeah, the at the guy kid. that was in his yeah, face. Yeah, I remember that. But you still. Know, uh, it was okay to pick on that child, huh. but it's not okay to pick on her. Possibly because Greta doesn't so. smile and she has braids. That's the only difference I can think of. No, it was well, the okay, money there's behind. there's other differences, but those are the obvious ones. Right, but the money behind both stories. <laughs> you don't get you don't get that kind of in the public eye attention unless there's big money pushing the engine behind you, or you're going to get like what we get. It's not yeah. it's not the story you tell; it's the people you tell it for. Oh yeah. And it actually does make a difference how you tell it. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is it is my personal belief that when people are desperate for a change, that's when stuff like RLM will finally be noticed by the public. When they're so desperate, they got to go to the Internet to try to find something because nose-to-nose -nose isn't working. Hey, Frog. 
Well, I am Lone Frog just popped in too. I don't think he was here. Yeah, when started. Lone Frog's been in here for a while. He's oh. been he's been playing. No pancakes. Oh, mental must be working. Yep, I don't see cakes anywhere. Yeah, he usually says something to me in the beginning. Yeah. Oh well. See, and and there was another thing that I'd heard that that really makes sense to me. Beliefs are just thoughts that you have you have. Uh, made a habit of thinking. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, You're so used to it. See, I think it's uh, when you're familiar with something, you trust it. Yeah. The more familiar, the less attention you pay to it because it's, it's calm. It's right there all the time. I always see it. And being so blind with my eyesight, it's even worse. <laughs> Because in my reading glasses, I use these because I'm on the internet quite a bit or doing mm-hmm. a puzzle or whatnot. So I, if I can't see beyond about four feet, it starts to get a little blurry in these glasses. <laughs> ah. so, so, right. You know, I'm trying a new oil that, um, well, a blend that mm-hmm. I did that's mm-hmm. supposed to be uh, good vitamins for your eyes to strengthen your eyesight. Yeah. So I haven't yeah. used it for a couple of days because... Well, I've been at mom's. But. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the freight the freight from America to here is usually the price of whatever's in the box. So it's very expensive. It's not it's not pri- price effective, cost effective to uh, order products from other places. I have to stay local, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do think that. You know, there's probably doTERRA distributors over in Europe. See, there's there you also, go. There's, yeah. there's really good um, essential oil companies all over the world. And I could just tell you the oils that I use. And, and make my way, own. Yeah. Yeah. It would be a hell of a lot cheaper, and you can make it whenever you need it then. And who so. can I trust more than you? Nobody. Are you kidding? Well, you trust yourself. So oh, come on. That, uh, wow. Who would even doubt a thing like that? I do whatever I damn well please, whenever I damn well please to do it. And the only rule I got, really, is just keep your hands off shit, you know? Yeah, if it ain't yours, leave it alone. Yeah, pretty much. That's And that's it. And I still I go shopping and pick stuff up, put it in a basket, and, you know, do all that. But yeah. I don't, like, pick up people and put them in my basket. I'm going to take one of you. You you'll make a good slave. Yeah. I you, need a you victim. You look like you'd be a good yard ornament. I think I'll pick you up and take you home. Yeah, <laughs> you, the, one of those things. The yeah. gnome is lonely out in the backyard. Oh, spring is coming. Is it spring? It is trying. I do have some, and it's mother coming. had it's some. Still cold. Mother had some of her little flowers are starting to break through the yeah, ground. Yeah, that's so. why. I, yeah, because they we got flowers in the backyard coming up, and uh, in the window sills. The stuff that I grow, I don't know. I don't even get it. it. Makes no sense. Some things they thrive as long as I just water them and talk to them every day. They just fucking go. And other things, plants that uh, I tried to continue in inside, two of them didn't survive, and one did. Hmm. Yeah, but hey, can't complain because I mean I'm not a farmer like you. I'm just working off common sense and a, a little bit of crap I pull off the internet if I have a real important question. I'm a practitioner. I go out there and I practice and yeah. I play. And if yeah. that didn't work, then I'll try something different. And I'm going to grow loofahs this year. How do you so grow a loofah? Um, I tell you what, I have. I happen to have a lake. <laughs> you you better have a link because if, if a loofah is what I think it is, I don't want you to grow a loofah, dear. <laughs> well, the farmer guess, might not know, like it either. <laughs> for some reason, I just really didn't, you yeah. know, yeah. didn't I? I never really thought of where where they come from. I mean, I I thought they were a sponge of some kind or something, <clears throat> but apparently it's a kind of gourd and. Uh, so I have some seeds that I got from, <clears throat> excuse me, rareseeds.com, yeah. and I am going to grow loofahs. Oh, is that the link loofahs. right there? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I was waiting for you to post it. I wasn't reading. Oh, Mary, it's been a day. Ah. It's Saturday. It's get stoned and talk to Mary Day. 
sometimes. And you know the really the really cool thing about these is when they're little, mm-hmm. you can cut them up and eat them just like zucchini or or whatever. <laughs> but when you let them get bigger and they yeah. start turning color, okay. they start becoming very fibrous. And if you let them finish the full process, then you just kind of scrape off the outer and and you shake the seeds out. Mm. And you've got loofahs that you can use for washing your dishes, for washing your body. Really? You know, and and when you're done with them, just throw them out in the compost. Oh, very good. Uh, I'm impressed impressed with the stuff you find. I'm, I'm impressed with all that stuff a lot of people find, by the way. Just... Yeah, I've spent, well, I think I just spent more just, time with you. I don't remember where I first saw that, but I thought, wow, that's really that's really cool. So, yeah, this year I'm going to be doing Dalufa, <laughs> growing Dalufa. And Rob Works so, isn't saying too much today in the RLM chat that I can tell. And I well, thought, he just woke up. I yeah, think he okay. took a nap. Because I thought he was joking around with us. I didn't realize that he really had a... a Physical problem. I was making jokes back at him because I thought he's a cur- curmudgeon. I thought he was playing yeah. me. So uh, well, wow. he even did a puff puff laugh. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I thought, nah, he's fine. He's just fucking around. Apparently not. He had dental appointment. Mine went bad. You were saying. Uh, well, it made me yeah, feel. Yeah, said not, something about he had some dental work done. So yeah, I don't like. I'm not crying or anything, but I feel like wow. I wish I would have took him. See, I don't know internet. I never know how to take people, except Hansel and Vinny. Because those two uh, guys always tell you exactly what they're thinking at the exact moment they're talking. Out of all of these. Other people, I still get a little, I got a little, under, you know, sometimes I read what they write and I kind of think about it for a minute to get it. Because I'm not in tune with every freaking person in the uh, RLM except Vinny and Hansel. Those two I understand completely. Everybody else, not so much. My wife really drives me nuts. I'm trying to read what she writes. I'm going, I fucking day, man. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, but that, and that, see, I'm tuned into Sir on my wavelength. So I'm reading what she writes in my language, thinking all you people do the same thing. It's, life is insane. We're all fucking nuts. Just enjoy it. Well, you know, everything that we I'm read, sorry, we Rob, translate yeah, into our own yeah. language. So you you translate into uh, Flash Rooney language, and I translate into Grammy language. Yeah, and, but Rob got on here and said, no, it's for real, Flash. And I, I suddenly I feel kind of guilty about punking him because I thought he was teasing me. Weird. Uh, uh, just saying, it's a weird moment for me because I'm not a very nice. I don't. Eh, people get sick. Yeah. Big deal. But I usually don't make fun of them when they are. <laughs> so I have to, you know, reevaluate the way I read Mr. Rob Wirt's input from the moment. See, he's given me another quest. Okay, I'm responding to Rob in the chat. So you just keep talking. Oh, I was just being philosophical on the dork table day because, you know, it's not every day before B's birthday. Because uh, yeah, I know. Oh, and I I deleted the first notes that I was keeping track of. I don't know what the hell I'm doing today. Just everything's gone wrong. So I redid the notes. I came up with the title for the show. And today's show, I probably pro- hope I didn't already use this, but it seems familiar. Let's rate the quality of your life. <laughs> and rate the quality yeah, of your life. Your life. Wow. Not my life. So. So is it going to be, you know, like you can get sections of a star, you know, however many stars you get? Well, you get 10% off your federal income tax if you answer these five questions. 10%? I took my mother to get her taxes done. Oh, Please don't make me go through that shit again. What does that mean? I had to take her. That was part of why I went down to see her was oh. to take her to her yeah. appointment to get her taxes done. Yeah. <laughs> Another industry that has built up mon- to a monstrosity. Because These of people are shameless. That- yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but but see, that's what I mean. When you when when you apply to do it, and then you do it, then why are you complaining about doing it? 
there was a don't do it from the beginning. It's just some people didn't pay attention. Or they never well, heard that side of the argument because it was taboo to say it. Now it's and a people cons- in the IRS even say that yes, yeah. yes, when they're forced into answering honestly, like on the stand, mm-hmm. it is voluntary. Yeah. They just don't explain how you volunteered, and when you find out how, wow, it's so de- it's defeating because they get you with your driver's license first. They they suck you into this thing somehow. I I know it works because I did it. And then once you're old enough to understand, well, there's you, there's risks involved. In in my day, it wasn't that bad like it is now. But there's checks to see if you got illegal aliens up in your gas tank or whatever the fuck they're doing. Uh, you know, weed checkpoints or whatever. Whatever. I've read. Is this true? Or am I just being memed here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're not paying any attention. Am I being well, mean? Well, I'm responding. I'm sorry. I'm oh, responding you're to talking. Brian Slave in the chat. Fuck. Brian Slave I'm in the chat. I'm reading the chat. He what said, a waste you of can't time. walk and play with your dog for a minute or an an hour a day. You yeah. should not have one. Nah, we, and I'm responding. I dance with my doggies. Yeah, but I don't respond to people that call me a gas house. It makes my head hurt. Oh. And I'm not even sure why they were doing all that. You know what? It, See, I don't. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm a gas house or not because, mm. although I have been eating a lot more healthy, which makes you a little bit more um, effervescent. Mm. <laughs> oh, Beetle, put the puppy down for the nap. The eleven-year-old puppy. Oh. I'm telling you, he treats his dog like Cirque treats Hannibal, like they're people. Well, you know they are members of the family. Yeah, but well, you know what? The dog is so, it's hard to explain. We have this seemingly, if you come over to the house and you see me and the dog, we have a very aloof relationship, me and Hannibal, all right? But if I go walk down to go meet Cirque at the train, and then I pass Hannibal on to Cirque because I'm going to go on to go get something from the grocery, and the dog can't go in the store, so I... She takes the dog. And the dog freaks out because I'm leaving her now. So, or if she mm-hmm. catches my scent, if they're still out walking home and I, I was quick at the grocery and get back fast, the dog will smell me and then drag cert to me. But if we're in the same room all the time, the dog doesn't behave that way. <laughs> I got her trained way different than a, a lap dog. I mean, she's the opposite. Well... You know, everything's right in with the world if if her humans are in the same room. But if her humans are not in the same room, then she senses there is a disturbance in the doggy force. Well, then let me ask you this one. You're, you're, okay. You know a lot about dogs. Because Cirque tells me one thing. I want to hear what you say. When sometimes, like in the morning time when Cirque's getting ready for work, for example, when she's around, the dog lays on the chair between me and Cirque with her nose or sits behind me on my chair with her, her head on my back <laughs> mm-hmm. while I'm sitting here at a, at a table. Why mm-hmm. why does a dog do that? It's just, it's like a comfort thing. Yeah, okay. Let's see. I mean, my doggies, when I let them out in the morning, when they come back in, at least one of them will come over and lay down right beside my chair. Like, I can't move without moving the dog right mm-hmm. beside my chair. Mm-hmm. And no, they can't get up on the chair with me because they're both too dang big. <laughs> but, yeah, that's right. Yeah, cause, yeah. But, and especially not Bubba. <clears throat> Crime any Christmas. He's tried to, you know, just get up on the legs with his front paws. And it's like, dude, seriously, you're freaking heavy. But, yeah, yeah my doggies are not going to ever be lap doggies because, I mean, there's times we'll, where I'll sit on the floor and let them put their head on my lap, but that takes up the whole lap then. So there's no way they could sit on me, not without squishing me. They're mm-hmm. both big babies. But that's okay. Yeah, and, you know, they're, they're so funny because Snuffles will, you know, she'll be sleeping, then all of a sudden she'll just bark, just one bark. And I I think it's her way 
of making sure that Bubba's in the house, and if he is in the house, getting him worked up, so I'll let him outside so that she can have the house to herself. Yes. They're, <laughs> they're territorial, and as they grow, they're they're not stupid. In, in general things, dogs don't know how to think. Like the doors, they don't understand doors open or close, some of them. You know, like Hannah still walks right up to the door that opens, pulling it in. And time after time, she'll walk up and then step around on the stair, maybe. She she never stops short of the door out of memory. See, Bubba is figuring out how to open doors. But, but when she has a certain smell that gets her attention or hears something, she's... You know? So yep. she's got a memory, but it's not for the things that we're in tune with. It's in the dog world, whatever. She's a protective dog. You know, she's defending yeah. her domain from all the predators, birds and shit. <laughs> well, yeah, she looks at you guys as mine. Uh, yeah. You are my two toys. Yeah. <laughs> I take you for a walk. You know, that kind of stuff. I hate, sometimes her and the cat, they seem like they hate each other. It's a very strange relationship they have. Go figure. Oh, yeah. We've got these boring lives with cats and dogs. But uh, you know, I I sit here and I watch my critters and I think, yeah. oh my lord, how how goofy. And then I stop and realize, I'm sitting here watching my critters. So who's the bigger goof, the critters or me sitting here watching them and laughing my ass off at them? So I I think I'm the bigger goof. Well, just saying. We're gonna have to take a vote on that. Real Liberty Media. <laughs> Where a new everybody's, RLM poll. Everybody's Who's vote the bigger matters. Goof? Everybody's vote matters. Every fucking buddy. Even somebody, baby. Your your vote matters. What a joke that is. Your vote matters. <laughs> I mean, what is wrong with people? They think these businessmen are in politics doing anything on their behalf. Everything these fucking cunts do is for their to line their pockets. But you know what? Their vote does matter to them. Oh, yeah, it that matters, matters to, to them. them. What an ego. Wow. Yeah. But that's part of the physical reality is is dealing with the ego and learning that you can control your ego, not the other. You should not go around letting your ego control you. You should learn to control your ego, yeah. from my perspective at least. Well, how do but, you do that? Oh, it's tough. I'm still learning. Okay, give me an example. Well, you know, I used to get all butt hurt about things because, you know, somebody said something yeah. or called me a name or whatever. And that butt hurt was my ego reaction to someone else's label that they were wanting to slap on me. And bless her heart, Lovely Circle said, just because someone <laughs> wants to slap a label on you doesn't mean you have to wear it. <laughs> and when it finally sunk in... Yeah. And my ego finally wrapped itself around that. It's like, okay, you want to slap that label on me? Okay, fine. I'll wear it with pride. I'll put lights around that son bitch, and I'll say, this is what so and so slapped on me. I feel special because they gave me this gift. You know, so I'd, I've taken it and I've embraced it, and and a lot of times when my embracing of it pisses them off, I can't figure that out. Must be hurting their ego. Hmm. Well, you know what's hurting my ego? What's that? These fucking gun laws <clears throat> back home in America. Uh, land. Land of the free. Well, yeah, they got the red flag laws. Some states are pursuing it already. and They seem to be um, gun happy. So the cops are killing the guy that, you know, he's being threatened. Probably this is the first notice he's gotten. We're going to come. They come armed to take your gun from you. Well, what's the gun for? And your first reaction, how do you fucking deal with it? Hey, that's the cops. But you're a gun owner, so you're going to defend yourself. That's what guns are for. Cops are a problem. They need to stop. <laughs> well, you know, it's like all these wellness checks that you read about where they go to check on someone because the loved ones think they might be suicidal. And the cops show up, and they're not suicidal, but they get suicided. Yeah, I have read links and I've seen videos and horrible, just horrible mishaps from law enforcement, right? And 
I just don't understand how average Joe can support that shit. <laughs> it's fucking ignorant is what it is. It's ignorant to punish people for doing what they were raised to fucking do. What, what would be smart is to stop raising people to do this fucking shit that you want them to be punished for. But that yeah. would be too hard. So let's make pot illegal and convince the world it's bad for them. So that we can punish people for not listening to a lie. Well, that's no different than going to the doctor and instead of actually trying to find out what the cause <laughs> of your high blood pressure or whatever it is, yeah. they say, oh, here, just take this pill. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, that pill is making you have this symptom now. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? I have a pill for that one, too. Yeah. Instead of saying, well, that pill's not working so good because now it's causing you to have this problem as well. Mm -hmm. So how about we just take that pill away and we look at what might be the underlying cause of this? No, we can't do that because that <laughs> takes work. <laughs> you have to actually dig into things. No, you don't. So let's, no, you, let's no, you don't. Them an, no, you let's do give not, them another pill. No, you don't have to dig into anything. What you have to do is trust somebody that tells you the truth and people are just too quick to assume the lie out of whoever they're listening to don't believe nothing so that's the world that's the world we're in we're in a, a ball of shit filled with fucking liars that the more money that they make is proof that they've told more bullshit than you <laughs> and you know who would be happy about that kind of world I, not me. I, I, dung I beetles. It. Dung, be <laughs> dung beetles would look at it and go, "Oh, Kilimanjaro! Look at this big ball of shit I can roll around." Well, that's what we do, though. We roll around yeah. in a big ball of shit, arguing and fighting over our share of a big ball of shit. While, while in the meantime, all the finance transactions that we make support three hundred fucking families. And not a fucking clue. The public has no fucking idea what I just talked about. You, I know you know. The regular, I'm, just, I'm trying yeah. to get past that image of all of us being dung beetles and fighting over a ball of shit. But that's what we do. <laughs> it's no, it's no different. Well, you know, watch a, a fat, fast forward thing of of like a, uh, watching a train where all the people running on the train and back and forth. Watch that real fast. And it looks like the fast of a ant hill, you know, or an ant, an ant, a party of ants taking over a, like a banana slice. And if you play that really fast, it looks like people doing what people do. We're, See, we're, we're I just, see Keystone cops. So, right, right. You know. We're convinced somehow that we're superior to all these other life forms. And when we look at the fucking life forms that we're so superior to, they all get along better than we do. And they don't pay rent. We pay their rent. We feed them. <laughs> they don't, you know, unless they're uh, being kept like toys and forced to do tricks by crooks, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people like Beetle that have a pet, you that have pets, you know. And then there's yeah. people that use animals to make money that don't treat them so well. But average Joe has a pet and doesn't understand this. They they think that that, that animal be, you know, doing the performing is treated just as good as their dog is. But they're not. Yeah. Just like a job. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You look at a job and you go, well, I can make so much money doing this and blah, 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 blah. And then you go do the job. Well, if at the end of the day you go, oh, I wish I didn't do that job. Don't. It's advice I got. If don't do anything for fucking money that you're not willing to do for free. Dude. Yeah, I was like 28 or 29 years old when I first heard that and really got whap, slap in the face. You need to put that in the notes. Oh, okay. But yeah, that, it was, would, that would be an it, excellent. It was one of the best bits of advice I ever got in my life. Right. You know, that's like a bit of advice that I saw years ago. You need to create yourself a life that you don't need a vacation from. 
You know, all <laughs> these people are saving up for a vacation, and then they go on vacation, and when they get home, they're more exhausted than they were before they went on vacation, and they've got to get caught up from the vacation. So why yeah. not just create a life that you don't need a vacation from? Then that way, every day's a vacation. Yeah, I think that's where Circle would be. Because Circle's free to travel. She's got uh, a Danish passport. It's good in the EU and all that. She's never looking for excuses to go, oh, I want to go to this uh, thing here in, you know, in Spain. Conventions. Yeah. They got all that, you know, high tech crap. She could get involved in all that if she wanted to. But apparently, me and Cirque, as, you know, we like the simpler kind of life. I think with all the high tech shit, toys to play with, to stimulate your mind. But as far as uh, like automatic everything, no, we got rid of our dryer about six months ago. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, nobody asked. I told the story on I think alone. Neither one of us ever said to the other, you know, I hate this fucking dryer. I wish we didn't have it. And we were both thinking it all the time, but never said it. And then one day she says, you know, I really don't like this fucking drawer. And he went, me, me neither. Well, I thought you liked it. I thought you liked it. Because <laughs> we're married so to each other. you can hang everything out? Yeah, but see, yeah, but we're married to each other. So the, the marriage thing survives because we don't look for the problems to make problems bigger. We avoid that shit. And, yeah. And as we've, you know, developed the relationship, now I, I, I should tell her things faster instead of waiting years. Because I, you know, I don't want to make my wife unhappy. So, you know, I thought she was wanting the dryer, and she thought I was. So we were on <laughs> opposite sides yeah. of the same coin, like being in politics, voting for you know the same thing. Don't matter. Yeah. But you don't know that. You just think you think you're different because you're different, but you're really not. <laughs> it's life. Yeah. yeah. It happens to us all the time. I bet you could find fifty ways you and Farmer have the same thing happen, but it's you know it takes time to get through it. Oh yeah. They yeah. call that you know what they call that experience, Miss Mary. Experience, ah. yeah. Not everybody has experience. See, and I thought it was just being on the same wavelength. Hmm. Well, well, yeah, but without the physical or mental experience to go along with it. Just the wavelength in itself would be what? Watching TV? <coughs> How would you equate that? Um, hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to you, I, my buddy told me when I was you know, a young man. He says, don't do anything for money that you're not willing to do for free. And it changed my life, I think, at that time and where I was. Well, yeah, because it, it basically just what it boils down to is don't do something that you don't truly enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but at, at that age, your talents aren't uh, nurtured by your peers and your surroundings. People push you to shit like school and crap like that that makes you do something, right, that you got to learn. How. Anyway, I've got talents that needed to be experienced so I could develop them, not mm -hmm. not controlled so I would use my gift to suit another person's eye, but to suit my own eye. It's very mm -hmm. – Cirque still marvels at, wow, how do you draw like that? Because she was taught how to draw what she draws, so it's different yeah. for her. Yeah, school. So to me, in my in my estimation of reality, it seems to me that schooling really disturbs the flow of your natural cheese, and it makes you do what it wants you to do. Not, it doesn't give you the freedom to to follow what you're trying to learn. It controls it and takes you down certain roads only. Hmm. Well, I mean, if you're going to learn how to be a plumber, they're not going to give you, you know, uh, they're not going to give you welding tools. They're going to true, right? So every everything that you do has like necessities that you need to survive to get through it. Well, yeah, 
Okay. Well, sometimes it's people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. See, because sir can be and all that crap. We both have a, 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 a fulfillment to the other one, I think, is what it comes down to. Because some people are needy. And other people just you fulfill their their you know their basket. Let's use that word because it's not me. Well, you you fill a space that they didn't realize needed filling. Yeah, something like that. That's a good way to put it. Because life will take you places if you're not looking for shit, you'll find it easier if you're just aware it's available to you. But don't I don't try to find anything. I just know things are out there. When I need something, it'll make itself known. Ah, you are manifesting. I don't know. You are manifesting, grasshopper. Is that what that's called? Well, yes, it is. You are manifesting your reality. Yeah, that's what the newies call it. Ah, well, I could go any direction I want to. See, that's what freedom. See, to me, yeah, the, the physical act of being free is not pretty, pretty freedom. But the mental side of freedom is kind of, that's different. You know, because I'm a married guy and I've got somebody to answer to about what I do and what where I go and how long I'm going to be. Because she's my wife. You don't just leave. And, yeah. You know, I'll be back when I'm fucking done. No, that's wrong. So I have a different, but that's how I treat my friends. <laughs> See you later. Be back later. No, nope, but my wife, no, I'll be there at six o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Yeah. See, you know, a lot of people think freedom means that they're free to do whatever they damn well please, whenever they damn well please, wherever they damn well please, yada, yada, yada. But freedom actually carries an awful lot of responsibility. Yeah. If you're not willing to pay the price for whatever freedom makes you believe you can do, you know, because it's not really about breaking the rules. It's about that balancing line where. Are you sane enough to feel free and not hurt anyone else? <laughs> or are you a selfish fucking cunt and are you going to screw everybody over that you can get over on? And a lot of people fall into that category and oftentimes don't even know they're in it because of the job they perform. They see their self differently than I do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, say, a police officer, sir. Or maybe a Bank office to serve, or hey, even an educator to do to to, because I despise the educated system. Oh, what a joke! Horrible crap. You know, I found out that I have a niece that is homeschooling her kids, hmm. and mom is she was just so freaked out about it. How does she have any time away? How does she? How does she have? And I said, Mom, don't worry about it. They are dealing with it. You know, if she's wanting to homeschool her kids, oh, but that's such, I know it's not easy to do, but if she's wanting to homeschool her kids because she doesn't want her kids fed the garbage that they're feeding them in public school, and basically she's homeschooling because they have four little ones and can't afford to send them to the private school. It um, doesn't matter. It's still the same but crap. She's, yeah. she's but she's still homeschooling her kids, and I said, this way, Mom, those kids, you know, they're learning the basics of the reading, the writing, the arithmetic, but they're not learning all the other bullshit. And they also have the freedom because, you know, oh, but they have to have, well, I know they have to have certain criteria that they have to meet according to the state in order for it to be a qualified homeschooling thing. But, you know, there's a lot of, especially in the larger communities, like she lives in the Kansas City area and, uh, there's groups out there of parents that homeschool their kids and they have play days where they all get together and the kids interact and they, they do group lessons, like whether it be science or what have you. And, you know, you get a little bit of a break. And her hubby, you know, runs a, a garage, you know, where he does – um Oh, he rebuilds, you know, like older vehicles, you know, like 68 Chevy long bed pickups, that kind of shit. And um, so a lot of times the boys will go out and they'll help daddy. So not only are they homeschooling on, you know, with their 
their regular, like enable to read and do math so you don't get screwed over, all that fun shit. But they're also learning a trade because they're helping their daddy with, you know, rebuilding old cars. So, and her daughters are learning how to cook and how to sew and how to crochet and they're learning real life skills along with, you know, learning how to to do the other things that you're supposed to learn in school that, yeah, well, wow. if you can't read good enough but they don't want to keep you back, then they just pass them along. And I can't tell you how many times I've talked to college professors that say, yeah, I got kids in my class that read at a second grade level. So public education system is just that. It's education system. Right. But th see, so. that's voters insist that the state knows better than the public. Yep. The indoctrinated yep, because... have got this uh, exceptionalism about themselves where they, they think that they're looking down at you somehow. Controlling yeah, you, they, you, but not, they're they not They would being much controlled. rather trust some nameless person that's never met them to make decisions for them mm -hmm. than to actually look at what's going on around them yeah. and make decisions for their own life. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. just sad. Well, it was like when, you know, when Hansel was, it was bitching about some bridge that fell down in Florida a couple, about a year ago. And, and the thing that they were harping on was the board of directors of ownership to the company were female, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean the people that laid it were female. <laughs> yeah. The people that built it were probably not female. The people that designed it, probably not female either. But. The, well, and maybe the people that poured the concrete or the people that made the steel or the people that. I'm just saying. There's it, nothing, so many variables. That, right. But there was nothing about it. It was totally female except the ownership of the company. And I remember this monkey just going nuts all the freaking time for a couple of weeks over this link. And, you know, oh, see what happens when women are in charge. Ha have you yeah. ever heard of the Queen of England, Mary? You know who she is? Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've you know what she, pictures. Do, all right, you know what she owns? She thinks she owns Okay, it. well, whatever. Thinks. We go, the, see, this is where I do not fit in the society is when I was in England. Fuck your queen. Are you I would get in big fucking shit if I would do that in public. But to me, fuck, fuck your fucking queen. Who the fuck do you think I am? Some subject, some half man, half beast in a dress? <laughs> I don't think yes. so. I don't know more seriously than I took uh, Obama or Bush or Clinton or Trump or anybody that comes after Trump. And the other day, <laughs> Trump did not win the election. He got put there by the bankers. That's what the electoral college is. <laughs> the true power behind the country. Not not the voter, you dumbass. And they don't do anything that benefits anybody that's you know, worth benefiting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, come on. If you don't need it already, then why do you have it? Yeah. See, what and I mean that, by that? that's that, where those publicists or uh, the the advertising people, yeah. man, oh man, mm. I will bet you those people have to have some kind of a psychology degree or some such <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> they definitely really... with bullshit. No, no, no. Look, it, it's just like when I was a salesman, dude. It's just telling the person that you you're talking to, and in advertising, it's no different. It's the same thing. They're talking to you in a language that you want to hear. Oh, you, yeah. You've been conditioned to accept what you're reading as. Oh, this is wonderful. I've got to do that. Where yeah. other oh, people... Oh, pretty little lies. Yeah, but other people are conditioned to not trust what they see. Yeah. Yeah. Guess which group I'm in. people get conditioned... Well, you're in the one that don't trust what you see. But you got bad vision. <laughs> That's beside the point. I know. But, you know, it really is kind of funny, the different things that, that go into how someone forms their opinion on something. Because mm. that, could, that could very well be part of what helped form that opinion that you don't trust what you see because you you need 
to have something to help you with your vision to start with. So therefore, <laughs> just because you see it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, and just so you're, because you you're, don't see it doesn't necessarily mean. Yeah. It's neither good or bad. It just is. I don't think I judge. It's just, it's just a helping to form yeah, yeah, an yeah, opinion yeah. or a perspective or an outlook. Well, I don't think I judge the world on that same, uh, the good and evil kind of scale. I judge it different. Some things happen because of a lack of control, and other things happen for uh, an excessive amount of control. So th there's a balance to walk. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. It's fucking hard. To We're fueled improperly. We have bad information. We think we know every goddamn thing. I know they like to keep, they, whoever they are, like to keep people in balance mm -hmm. or out of balance. I don't, that way, I don't feel you imbalanced. can't ever get your footing. Well, I don't feel imbalanced, but to other people, I'm very unbalanced. Depends on the listener. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I have a lot of people that tell me I'm unbalanced, too. But, you know, I revel in it, and I say, yeah, well, when I'm unbalanced, I just do a jig. It's okay. Mm. And if I fall down, well, hopefully that won't leave too big a bruise, but ah, I'll get back up. What was that? Um, it's like a samurai saying or something like oh, that. Oh, learning is um, painful, grasshopper. Well, no, um, no. Okay, never mind. A true warrior yeah. may fall seven times, but they rise up eight. Yeah, but you know what you can do with your warrior? Stuff him in a box. I know. Put him in a boat but, and send it to Europe. Yeah, but you know it. what? Real warriors. What? Fuck when you warriors. when you look back at the old stuff, the real warriors, yeah. they were the ones that they took care of it, made sure everybody had plenty to eat, made sure everybody was safe, oh, made okay. sure everybody I've a, was I've got a it modern wasn't, it I've, wasn't a mercenary, it yeah. was someone that was I've got a modern day and they've, version of they've the word. Messed up the word just like they're messing up Tesla with frickin' Elon Musk's piece of shit Tesla. Because now Tesla will never be looked at the same way because no. Elon Musk and his yeah. freaking Tesla. Well, you don't think that was him that thought of all that? Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> this he's, is a he's group. He's just a puppet. Yeah. The front man for a bad banner, bank of, band, uh, yeah. band of bankers. That, 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 that. That, too. <laughs> a band of bankers. Hey, you try saying that. Band of bankers, band of bankers, bank of bankers. Wow, blah, ah. blah, 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 blah. That, too. Yeah. yeah, it's a good thing that we we're only have one. You know, I was thinking about time travel just the other day. <laughs> oh yeah, it's my it's the most fascinating form of entertainment that life has for me. The concept of time travel because it's a paradox. You can't answer any of the questions. If I travel into the past, where am I today? <laughs> What? And you know, hey, I listened a minute. to something about that <laughs> yeah. um week or so ago. And actually, we all time travel. Okay, but At still. At least according to this one person, um, because <laughs> there are multiple realities. <laughs> yeah. And so when you, it's not necessarily, it's time travel, but it's not time travel because we're always in the now. There's The past is, you know, you can't go back there. But when you time travel, what you do is you shift from, from one reality to the next. Hmm. If if you want something in the past to change, you oh. shift to reality where that didn't happen. Hmm. And so you're time traveling hmm. because time is not a linear. It's always now. Hmm. But you're shifting from one reality to the next. And I thought, wow, oh. that is a really interesting concept. I'm going to have to ponder that one a while. And it still, it bounces around inside my head every once in a while. And I think, hmm, so if I didn't want something to happen in my past, I just need to keep shifting my my perspective mm -hmm. until I get into the reality that that didn't happen in my past. It may take a while, hmm. but Well, yeah, but that's very vague. Like, okay, but what kind of verbal explanation is there to fulfill that, comp you know, complement that explanation? So I got a, a visual of it. What is it? Uh, how do you explain that where I could see it? 
because this is one of those you're you're painting a picture in words and I don't have a I don't have anything to compare it to. Okay, you hmm. said you took multiple paths throughout your life. Well, it, well no, I, I didn't. Time traveling say. or shifting from one universe to another is like hmm. taking a step to the side. You just shifted. Yeah, but I would often wake up in countries I didn't fall asleep in. <laughs> it's happened a well, few times, you know, traveling. You. You are a rather strange individual. And I actually, yeah, when when we flew to the UK, yeah. I fell asleep <laughs> over Canada yeah. and woke up in the UK. Yeah. So I understand that. <laughs> nice but, flight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, where'd the ocean go? Holy I crap. No, <laughs> it was there a minute ago. And it's so big. <laughs> Huge. See, that's the, and that's the other part of this. We, we are on this thing, whatever the planet is you call it whatever you want and it's yeah. so big I mean, big and then they go out and they, they try to tell other people that they understand the universe when this planet is so fucking big <laughs> there is so much stuff on earth that i haven't got to outer space yet <laughs> I, yeah. I I think all that outer space stuff is all made up stories by a bunch of people that got stoned on mushrooms. <laughs> well, and the way I look at outer space is outer space is anything outside of my body. That's like, outer space. Like a Klingon? <laughs> Star Trek was well, fucking great. They named the bad guys no, Klingons. The Klingons were, are usually around Uranus. They I got, mean, well, yeah, they that. got away with naming the bad guys Klingons. And put it on network fucking television for the world to enjoy. And they okay. called the bad guys Klingons. <laughs> and how long ago did someone call a planet your anus? See? That's, I mean, seriously. I don't know. That's your anus. You know, it's like my brother when I was little. He would yeah. poke two holes in the ground and he goes, this one's your head and this one's a hole in the ground. Point to your head. Mm. And I'd point to the other hole in the ground. Mm. It's the same damn thing. Mm. There's your anus and look up in the sky. There's your anus. Uh, I mean, who came up with that shit? Not so me. see? I didn't think of it. I would <laughs> it have been more It was freaking brilliant. Was it? I didn't think of it. Well, everybody's going around going, did you see your anus last night? No, I, I kept my pants on. I think, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a Jew trick. I think we're being it, it could by very the well be. Again. Oh, yeah. No hide lies are coming to America. If you don't know what that means, go fucking look it up. It's not I've, good. I've read the yes. no hide law shit. Wow. Well, see, it doesn't affect us. It affects the, the, the collective. Yeah. I just keep thinking, good luck enforcing that. Oh, they're going to. Seriously. Yeah. They, wait, they shoot people they're, for they're, traffic They will violations. try. They shoot people for traffic violations. I've seen it done on the internet links. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, they, there's, there's, they got no shame. They're shameless. Oh, yeah. They are shameless hussies. That's for damn sure. And it's all about money in a system that's all based on debt. What a... What a bunch of sheep we are as a collective. We got fucking nothing going for us. We eat second best fucking shit. Got shitty electricity. Bad water. The air we breathe ain't fit to fucking breathe. Not for not. And I still, I still think you know, with that free electricity thing, where mm. it's just in the atmosphere yeah. and you can just tap into it. Yep. I think the internet's the same damn way, and I think we got sold a science based mm. on a bill of goods mm. that. That you know is a way to sell a product when you should be able to just tap into the internet. It's like you synthetics. Just, yeah. You create an industry <clears throat> to sell your second-rate shit at because if they had the good stuff and they knew the good stuff existed, they wouldn't fuck with this nonsense. But we're not taught about a product that'll last you a lifetime. When I was a kid, we had Snap-on tools, baby. Know what I mean? Oh yeah. And we had Sears. Shit was forever in the day. You break it, you whatever. Come down, and get another one. Yeah. And their shit was hard to fucking break because they hardly ever broke anything. The tools, but if you did manage to, they'd hold up. Now look at what we got. 
Tesla oh, yeah. and freaking who else? Be, what's that? Bezos with his uh, this freaking yeah, yeah, Amazon Bezos. shit. I mean, I'm sure if you see if you can play that game, Grimner plays that game. It's all on credit any fucking way. I don't see why not. But personally, I don't want to do it. See? So I, we're a war, we're a world full of wimpies. No, I'm just a well, not a hamburger today. <laughs> I, right, and I'm I don't like to participate in it. Uh don't make me play commerce. Uh, I don't know. You know what I yeah. mean? Eh, eh, eh. Know what I mean? Eh. Yeah, I do, Vern. Because uh, you know when you uh, uh, when you do that, uh, I get I get mad. Don't don't whip out, Henry. Good God. Shit, that makes my butt pucker every time you do that. Cut that out. God dang. It's okay. like I'm going to have a visit from Captain Cornholio. You scare the hell out of me. Yes, Creeper. Miss, yes, Miss Mary. <laughs> okay, I was just having a little bit of fun. On the end, I know, on you the was end just of messing door. with me with whipping out your hank, and it just creeps me out. Yeah, like, oh, God. We, it's bad enough that that thing is still walking the earthly plane, let alone. Why? Ugh. Why? Just don't live up to his expectations. It's fucking. That's what I mean. There's there's a reality, and if you, if, I don't know how to get anybody else to understand how you do it. It's not whether you physically do shit in in this life that really matters all that much, because most of what we're doing isn't physical anyway. It's the wavelength that we're doing it on, whatever it is. Takes a, now, that's where your research comes in handy, I would say. Grimmy's wanting to know if we're going long Oh, today. yeah, we started Grimmy, 10 we started late. late today. Yeah, so we'll go 10 after we quit. How's that? Oh, I feel a sneeze. I was just bitching about all kinds of stuff here. But you know, we, <laughs> we did on the, we, we did get a title out of this. And pitched a few things. Coronavirus is more fun than chewing on a rubber band. And then I said, oh, I think coronavirus is the three-two flu. Get over it. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I, I rewrote your. Okay, sh- should I add I that? Know. Well, it's the same fucking principle. Is we're being bullied into being afraid, like usual. Yeah. Terrified, yeah. but they've got weapons to terrorize us with <laughs> that once upon a time they didn't have. They're they're using the internet on us now. China is well, dangerous. Oh, it's all locked down. How do you fucking know China's I know. Locked down? You know what? They 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 let us play on the internet, and then it got away from them. Yeah. In, in other words, I've created a monster. So, you know, they thought, oh, this will be a good way we can really mess with their heads this way. But then we took it and ran with it. And and so now they're going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait, uh, we can still use it for fear porn. We can still use it for fear porn. So that's what yeah. this whole China thing is because, well, you know, it comes from China. It must be cheap and or it's going to make you sick or, well, you know, so it's just well, they're just playing on that. Didn't China Trump, wound up being the boogeyman of the month. Right. But didn't Trump it used to be Al Qaeda? Didn't he do a big trade deal with China recently? Trump. Yeah, there's some kind like of trade deal ago. with China and a trade deal with Mexico and a trade deal with – and it's like, really? Are we playing freaking Monopoly or is this the stock market board game? What are you playing this time? I can't keep up with y'all. I think they're I'm, they're playing a game called Who's in Debt to Who. Oh, the game of life. No, no, no. <laughs> the game of – Game of the Jews to keep us all fucking confused. Ah. Well, so basically they're playing canasta then. You know, the well, rules are always changing. If Americans knew that the reason the Arabs and the Jews don't get along is about money, and that's all it is, it's nothing more than banking principles, because the Jews use usury and the Arabs do not. They make their earnings a different way. It's more beneficial to the person on the end receiving it. They're more willing to work with a borrower than a Jewish bank. Jewish bank wants you to default so you can take your shit and sell it. Oh, yeah. You're welcome, Cowboy Tech, and thank you for listening in. Hey, but you know what I found out through Clint is they'll never sell it with a clean title. (laughs) Well, true. I didn't even know what a clean title was. I just knew 
There's no way in the fucking world that, my, okay, I, I don't own this house. I mean, it's our, together, on paper, we own the house. But we don't own this fucking house. We owe the bank every freaking cycle. So, you know, I it's taken me forever to be with the circle enough to call this my house, too. Because I didn't want to be bound to that bank thing. <laughs> yeah. And that's too I don't give a fuck what, what, too late yeah I don't care anymore yeah. well but, and you know what in the immortal words of the group Kansas hmm. no man owns this earth we're on so really try telling really? that to these morons that support all this wealth and bullshit the stock now, market and billionaires I mean they don't ever fucking think if one man has a billion and a billion people don't have none <laughs> Where did the billion go? <laughs> well, and show me the billion. I really want to see. And what's it I for? I want to see a billion dollars. And what does it prove if you have a, a vast amount of wealth while other people don't have shit? So I, I can't appreciate that side of how we live. I, it's never made me feel comfortable. I've never been able to pass a hungry human being and not willingly offer to help them if I was in position to. Yeah. Yeah. The only way I would, and I wouldn't ignore anyone. I'd just go, hey, I got no money. But if I had money, I'd go, hey, have you eaten in the last week? You look sick. <laughs> and that's how yeah. I would, well, I, but luckily, I'm in Denmark, and people don't, they don't live like that here. So it's just one more thing that I don't need to do. <laughs> yeah. The town beggar has given me cigarettes on my way out of the store when I pass him on the, the way out. <laughs> oh, well, he because he knows I'm a you know I'm I'm a working class guy. I'm not the you know I'm not. He, we pass each other a lot because I like fresh things from the grocery. Don't want him sitting in the house for a week. I'm gonna go get him when I want him, and it's not that big a deal. So when I pass the guy that much, he goes, "Oh, you don't have a car. You walk all the time." That, so he gives me a smoke on the way home every now and again. It's just priceless. And if I turned it down, he would be insulted. Oh, yeah. Because when we pass when we pass in the pathways of the grocery or something, he's always very cordial and very nice to me. And I don't give him money or anything. I give him smokes when he wants one. And he hardly ever wants one anymore. <laughs> but... You know, for the most part, I, you know, especially if someone asks me if I've got, you know, something to eat or whatever, I, yeah, I give them food. No big deal. I have had some people tell me, can you give me 20 bucks oh. so I can go feed my kids? <laughs> and this was outside of Walmart. I was taking the grocery cart to my, to my vehicle to unload. Yeah, and yeah. I'll just look at them and go, well, no. I don't have 20 bucks, yeah. but... Here's a box of granola bars in here. And a case of bottled water. Oh, no, we wanted the money. Really? Well, obviously, you're not that hungry or that thirsty. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. In the parking lot outside of Walmart. I'm laughing at your story. <laughs> people are priceless. <laughs> people are just plain, yeah. No, they're, they're addicted but, to the indoctrination that they came in with. That's what they're. That's what's wrong with all of us. Yeah. Our addictions to whatever we're addicted to create that negative side that we carry with us. Because we all got one. I got a good one, too. My bad side will kick the shit out of your bad side. Any fucking time, baby. <laughs> well, my bad side sleeps most of the time. Oh, and you're a, you're a monster, too. You're you're like me, a little five-foot-tall hurricane. <laughs> Well, yeah. when my bad side does wake up, Duck! watch out. But... <laughs> Duck! Didn't know she could throw the couch that far. <laughs> I know. It's like I'm a superhero it, at moments. It's amazing. Now, I remember because growing up when my little brother, Cirque, met my little brother. He's a lot bigger than me. and mm -hmm. But I grew up taking care of myself against him physically. <laughs> Because I had that, yeah. that extra year of training and experience that he lacked. But he had size. Yeah. But the size, uh, see if you teach a small person how to not fight with other people. <laughs> it's a better way. See? Well, sometimes size can 
can be to your detriment. No, it can't. We're we're no. only if you're outnumbered, and then size doesn't matter at that point. Well, five, I tell five you what, guys. I have seen it. more little guys yeah. Yeah. take down big guys. Yeah, yeah, but if five against one person, it thing is. Well, yeah, five is, against one. That's just bullying. Nobody. Can, yeah, but a big man can't resist that either. So, but yeah, on a, on a scale of equal, I found that avoiding confrontation in my later years is the best route to take. Yeah. Uh, to try to use the diplomacy that a grown man's supposed to have instead of the anger of a fucking child. Because, God, I was an angry child. But it took forever to grow out of that. Well, and that is the ego that is ruling the self. Yeah, yeah. But you learn how to decipher your life as you go. And you learn it from the encounters you have with the grown-ups that you encounter. And some of us have, like, status encounters. And some of us have real-life encounters with people that they're not supposed to really know. But they find them anyway. Yep. (laughs) There you go. I chose to not do the school thing on purpose. For the longest fucking time, my parents were angry as fuck at me. Years, probably 10 years. Five of them I avoided them for. And uh, they finally forgave me because they saw that, they, well, you're right. Okay, and the way they came to that decision about me avoiding the system being right was they got fed up with America and went to England. Yeah, out of the frying pan into the fire. Basically. But mm. No, not at their age. Now, what, what happened was they spent time in England and then they moved to Wales and then they moved to Scotland. So they just kept moving further further north to Ireland. Ah. So at the end of their days, they were both on an island in the middle of fucking nowhere. You know, population 10,000 for the whole chain of islands. Oh, darn. Yeah, it's where I was for two and a half years. Isolated on this, like a paradise with a bunch of Scott people around that hated America. <laughs> Oh, life and the adventures that we go on. Well, right. well you know what? We're done. I think. Hey, we're think done. We are... Okay. Yep. Thanks, everybody, for playing along with us. Thank you so much, Gramsci, for door tabling with me. And oh, I had, you're welcome. Yeah, I had a hard, hard time getting started tonight. I, I probably forgot to take my medication. But you want to close this out with a anything special, scheduled? Something to tell these wonderful um, folks. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a little tip. Uh, that I already I got realized. a little tip. Wait a minute. I'm Jewish. Okay. Well, <laughs> How much more I'll, little tip can you get? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a little advice oh, never mind. of something that I have learned. And you can take it or leave it, however you may wish to do so. But words do matter. And mm. when you say, I am sad or I am happy... That means that you are letting that emotion control you. But when you say, I feel sad or I feel happy, you are controlling the emotion. So remember to either control the emotion or the emotion will control you. And that's all I've got to say. So have an awesome rest of your day. And there's all kinds of way cool stuff coming up here on RLM, all kinds of stuff on the autoplay. And tomorrow at noon, Eastern Time, Gurmy's going to be on playing some blues for us. And I'm sure there will be a rousing game of trivia going in the chat. And then directly following him will be Hal Anthony. And he's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. Uh, All kind of other fun stuff going on this week. I'm not sure how much I'll be around, but I will try to be around. And I'm sure Flasher will be around somewhere or another. Oh, so, I'm winter other than that, I'm so, done. Man. I like my internet I, when I'm winter down. Yeah, in the winter time. This summer, I'm really going to be away a bunch. But well, I don't I plan will. to be away, but I plan to be <clears throat> maybe outside a few few hours in the daytime over the day. Not too much, ah. but yes, yeah, some. I got some. Pl- I got some planning I want to do. I'm a I'm a want to be farmer now, Miss Mary. Sweet. See ya. Thanks, See everybody. See you. Love you. Bye.